just a second. Oh, here comes Ivy. So welcome everyone. Thank you so much for joining us today. My name is Sarah Adams. I'm the Executive Director of Women's Empowerment International, or WE as we call it. I think most people here are familiar with our organization, but for anyone who's a little bit newer, we are a fundraising and grant making organization focusing on our mission to empower women with tools to work their way out of poverty, care for their families and strengthen their communities. We currently have nine grant partners in seven countries, including those here in San Diego, in the US. Um, all of them focusing um, with our funding on economic empowerment programs for women experiencing poverty. So we are so excited to hear updates from two of those partners today. We have folks with us from Foncose with their programs that we fund in Haiti. And we also have Irene representing IRC San Diego focusing on obviously the programs here in San Diego. So we have a nice mix. And I think um, it's nice to know that one of the communities served by IRC is the Haitian Creole community. And as uh, one of the, the IRC clients who likes to remind us says um, that not only are we serving with our grant funding women around the world, but we're also supporting women here in San Diego who are from all over the region and from all over the world. And so it really speaks a bit to the breadth and the depth of the programming that we support and the ways that we support women. So thank you everybody for being here, especially thanks to our presenters. And so we're going to hear a little bit from each of our presenters. Um, if you have any really just urgent questions that you're, you're ready to ask, um, if you can just maybe put those into the chat window and we can see if we get to them as we go, but we want to hold a little bit of time at the end for questions for both of our partners, just to make sure that everybody has enough time to present and can share all of their updates. So at the end, you can either put questions into the chat or you can, um, or you can also unmute yourself, ask those questions um, and just share that way. So first I will go ahead and introduce Dr. Erland Sipoli from Foncose, and um, I will turn it over to you now to introduce yourself and the organization and share your updates. Thank you so much. So hello everyone. I am um, Erland Sipolit, uh, born and raised uh, in Haiti. I moved to the state uh, recently, um, more exactly in 2020 during the COVID pandemic. And I've, uh, I'm the Concourse Executive Director. I've been in that position for, uh, it's going to be a year and in and, and March. Uh, I'm a physician uh, that have had a, a career in public health uh, in uh, Haiti. And, and I'm very proud and excited to be working uh, uh, with uh, Foncose right now. So what is Foncose? Foncose, it's, um, it's a, a family of three organizations, uh, Foncose USA, which I'm the executive director for, Foncose Foundation, and Foncose Financial Services. Um, we all share the same mission, which is to empower Haitian uh, family, primarily women, with financial uh, support and help them lift themselves out of poverty. Each of these members of the Foncose family have a different mission. The mission of uh, Foncose uh, USA is to educate and inform the uh, U.S. public about the work of Foncose uh, and AC, and also educate the U.S. public about the general situation that is happening uh, a, a, in Haiti. Foncose Foundation, it's a uh, Asian NGO. Uh, and Foncose USA, one of our mission is to find opportunities and fund for Foncose, a, a, you, a Foncose Foundation. Uh, Foncose Foundation, it's working all over the 10 department of Haiti. 
uh, and uh, a livelihood, providing uh, programs uh, such as the a CLM program that we're going to see, uh, EdTech, and uh, a boutique santé to support uh, the beneficiaries of uh, the loans that are a, given by the, a, the financial services of, of uh, Foncosé. The financial services of Foncosé, the bank, uh, they are the one that is handling the microcredit uh, a program. I'm very happy to uh, to tell you to tell everyone that Foncosé is the foundation is about to celebrate their 30th anniversary this year. Uh, so let's talk a little bit about the situation in Haiti. You can go to the other slide. Uh, I'm sure everyone is aware that uh, the situation, the political, uh, economical uh, situation in Haiti is very difficult right now. Uh, since the assassination of uh, the president uh, in um, 2020, if I remember correctly, uh, the country is being in a very dif difficult political situation with uh, the capital being controlled entirely by gang, um, more than 80% of uh, a, the neighborhoods that are surrounding the capital are controlled by gangs. Um, you can't get out of the capital unless you are flying uh, to the south, the north, or uh, the center. Uh, you can't uh, drive out because uh, all these areas are controlled by gang. There is also uh, a, a political instability where there's uh, no one right now that is part of the current government that is uh, elected the population and the opposition to the current government uh, very recently uh, have been asking the prime minister that's been in place since the assassination of Jovenel to, to resign from his position because he was unable to uh, held a election. And it seems like uh, those elections are not going to happen anytime soon. In the midst of all that, um, uh, there's the core group, uh, the international community that is represented essentially by the U.S., Canada, and France, has been trying to find ways to uh, uh, support Haiti, specifically uh, to tackle that uh, security situation that is at the root of all of the biggest issue that we are facing right now. Uh, very recently, they've been talking about sending Kenyan troops, but... Uh, and nothing is finalized yet, even though I see that this week there's some traction that is being made. There's negotiation that had happened last week in Washington at the Asian Embassy. They're saying that there's a date right now that has been chosen, but no one's know. And just yesterday, I was uh, a hearing that uh, a, the mission is going to cost about $600 million and that they are fine people that want to support it. And we should expect a deployment of uh, a Kenyan troop uh, in Haiti probably sometime uh, at the end of March. So uh, we will see. But that said, um, I just recently come to Haiti and the situation, well, it is very difficult, but life goes on. Uh, we can go to the other slide. Um, Foncosé a financial services. Uh, it is very important to understand that uh, Foncosé financial servicing is covering the entire, the entire uh, 10 department of Haiti. We have uh, a 46 branch and that are deserving the, uh, the more remote area and the poorest people in uh, this region. To explain uh, to everyone how that is important, uh first of all when you it's not easy to travel in the countryside of haiti because uh the woods uh, are not good and definitely people living in those remote areas never had access to, to to bank services never had access to to credit so focus the financial services bring that service to 
uh, the door of uh, a, this population and it give is giving them access to capital that is very beneficial for their livelihoods and their life. Specifically, uh, these loans are uh, a a, a dedicated uh, to women. It is very important to mention that because when you are looking at uh, the Haitian uh, a system, it, it's uh, the family system really uh, rely on the woman back. Uh, the woman is the center of the family. The woman is the one also that is providing and is working uh, in the field. There's that example that I like to take when I was working as a young doctor at the NDL Tibonit Valley. And although that I didn't know, knew at that time that I was going to end up to work for Foncose, but I had a nutrition program. And uh, the thing that I, what I noticed is that we all, we had relapses when we uh, end up treating mom with their kids for malnutrition, they will always come back. And the reason why uh, they knew how to balance the diet, but they just didn't have the means, they just didn't have the money to take care of their family. Once I connected them to Foncose, these women received the training and the funds that they are needed to sustain themselves and their kids. Uh, a, a never come back to my malnutrition ward uh, again. Again, so uh, because also of uh, that situation where, you know, when someone will, if they will get a loan from uh, either uh, a, the SFF services, uh, and there's all those external, um, I will say, all those external uh, uh, stuff that could happen that would prevent them to really succeed and uh, managing that capital that I've been giving to them. That's where you have the Foncose Foundation that come in that support uh, most of those beneficiaries with other type of services, giving them access to health education so that they can be successful in the endeavor that uh, we are trying to do to support them. And go to the other slide. Uh, so just looking at uh, our impact for 2022, we had about 50, 52K loans uh, delivered to client, client, a portfolio of 19 million, 94, 5,000 loan was distributed, uh, 157,000 uh, saving clients, 39.5 million in saving, 3.7 billion in transfer, and 1.7 billion in foreign exchange transaction. This is really important to talk about uh, a, the, the, the trend for money because this is one of the way that family that are living outside of Haiti is supporting their family. And Focose USA, because we, Focose Financial Services, because we are in all of those uh, key departments, we give access to these families to support family members on top of other services that we provide them within their own region. We can keep going. Foncose Foundation, uh, as I mentioned uh, before, it comes in support of the uh, financial services that is provided by SFF, education, held uh, a, in a CLM. So let's look at that a little bit closer. Go to the other slide. So our education program, EdTech Education Through uh, Technology. Uh, so we have, um, uh, to explain it very simply, there are HAs that uh, are working with the beneficiaries, there's a tablet and there's, different topics we make sure that you know because most of those women that we are working with uh they might not be able to read or write so we develop our modules in a way that you know it is understandable and that it is a it is easy for them to reach and to understand the topic that we are discussing and those topics uh a vary um uh, as you can see uh, sexual health nutrition uh, business development, financial goals, you know, anything that we see that, you know, 
any seed as we said, any tool that we can give them that will help them and support them on their everyday uh, life and that will be very uh, life changing and help them grow from the situation of poverty that they are facing at the time. And now uh, we also do follow up with them uh, to make sure that, you know, the training that we are giving them is useful and that if they have the chance to go into a, one of the loan program, that they are receiving the, the support that is needed. It is very important to mention that this day, because of the dire situation that we have in Haiti, it's uh, it has become a more difficult for a, the foundation to... Uh, to supervise uh, these uh, services. That said, uh, they have been kind of more creative and have trying to find ways to still go and work and reach out the beneficiaries of each of their program. But because of the gang activity and uh, all of the crises that we've been having, it's been very difficult to make sure that on as we used to do in the past, to really connect with them. So we've been finding creative way to make sure that this program is still ongoing and having the best impact that they can have given the uh, current situation. Keep uh, going, please. So this is uh, the results of the pilot that we have done. Uh, so 95% of participants who have uh, who have participated in the program uh, have uh, started a businesses and, and um, I've I just recently went to Haiti and uh, I've met uh, a couple of them uh, and it is uh, very it is very empowering to see uh, a woman that uh, has been uh, trained and feel confident in her training and uh, is telling you I had nothing uh, just a couple months ago and now you know i have my own business and i feel that i'm in control and in charge of my life um lens eye knowledge increased by 30 to uh, 83 percent this is also something that i want to highlight because because uh, our modules is uh they are uh, we, we make sure that they are adapted not only to the asian culture but also to the specificity of the area that you know these uh, our agents are, are working. It is the same culture, you know, whether you go in the south and the north, but there are some specificity. So that's why you know you can see that uh, people are assimilate uh, assimilating very uh, easily what we are trying to teach them, and we make sure also that. Uh, we are uh, including what we are telling them and to everyday practice uh, in their life. It's not a situation that they are going to see uh, outside of Haiti. It's thing that's happening on the ground and it's Haitian led. So they have that understanding and that exchange is, is easier. Uh, Participants stop throwing garbage into the streets. So we, we do have that sanitary problem in AC. So we educate them about the environment. Um, while I was uh, in AD just uh, about uh, a, two weeks, I went to that community in Las Carobas. And uh, they, it was a CLM graduation. And one of the participants uh, reenacted um, like a little a uh, little scene where she was teaching people in her community how to clean their spot when they are selling in the street so it goes to that level of details and it is very important as a public health uh as someone that i've worked in public health at haiti um i'm just going to take that example uh, sometime uh you you take you you're talking about uh, for example malnutrition and sometimes it's not because the mother could not feed the kids but it's because that they don't have good hygiene practice and they don't have access for example to clean water but it is important not only that you 
give the person access to the knowledge, but also you give the person the tools and you empower that person to get access to what they need to make that change. So that's exactly what Jose is doing through uh, the foundation. Health program. Uh, so in uh, 2022, uh, we have helped screen about uh, 8,000 kids uh, for uh, malnutrition. Children between the age of zero and 24 a month, it was a USAID grant. Uh, and we screened them with what we call a MUAC. Uh, it's that wristband that you you measure to see and that will let you know your, what, what stage of malnutrition. 742 women receive prenatal v a vitamins. This is another area that um, I need to highlight something. Uh, one of the key public health uh, issues that we have in Haiti is that we still have a high level of women that is dying uh, while giving birth. And the two main reasons for that is that there are no prenatal services that are uh, steady available for women. And the second reason is that still now in 2024, uh, I will say about 60% of deliveries happening in the countryside are not done in a professionalized uh, setting. And just the fact that we have uh, agents that are going to that's are going to go to, to meet these women in their community and making sure that during their pregnancy they are not, they are not anemic and they receive the prenatal vitamin that can change the outcome of that pregnancy. So this is uh, very, 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 very important. 16 branches had some activity in 2022, and 18 branches operated almost uh, a normally. This is just to highlight that despite the very difficult uh, situation that we have with the gang, we make sure that we find creative way to go and connect with our uh, beneficiaries. You can go to the other slide. Uh, Boutique Santé. This is one other uh, program that we have and that right now is suffering a lot because of the situation. So essentially, Boutique Santé, uh, it's, uh, it's a tool where we make sure that uh, the basic primary healthcare products are available within the community. And we do it as an entrepreneurial way where we empower one wom uh, a woman that has been trained in one of the business program of Foncose to sell these uh, materials within their communities. Again, this is very important for those of you that have traveled to Haiti. You know that you might be uh, a, somewhere in the countryside and uh, you need uh, access, uh, let's say, you know, just uh, a, the basic uh, chenic stuff and you don't have it because it, it it is so difficult to have access to this type of products. And not only that, uh, to basic uh, a medication as well. As a public health specialist, I know that... Uh, you only can get access to medication and uh, the goods that you need for your basic hygiene and what we call, uh, you know, the uh, the cities. And um, Boutique Santé is trying to answer to that question in a very sustainable way. And, and uh, this woman uh, that how a the, that have been implementing that program have been very useful and have been there. They have become leaders in their community because also they are trained to screen uh, a basic sign and certain chronic uh, a disease uh, such as uh, high blood pressure. They have been they trained to take uh, a high blood pressure and, and know also how to uh to understand and what type of advice that they should need uh, they need to uh share with the individual that has been screened this day the main issue that we are having with uh, that program is that because uh, of the gang that is uh, controlling all of the 
routes to go outside of capital, it's very difficult to make sure that they get uh, a, the goods and those uh, a clinics. And even when we will reach them, uh, because it's so difficult to get these products to them, uh, it become, they have to sell it like, you know, at a higher price. Uh, but that said, you know, it's still a very, very, very important program. At the CNM graduation that I was in Las Caobas, that is a region that is right in the center uh, a, of Haiti. And uh, during the graduation, they asked, which, uh, can you tell us one of the program of uh, Ifo Jose that you find the most impactful? There are five women that says, Boutique Sante, because now I can find, he, he was talking about uh, a toothpaste. I can easily find toothpaste, you know, and make sure that, you know, uh, my dental hygiene is uh, is taken care, of, taken care of. So just to show you that, you know, just a little thing, but that can make such a difference. Uh, and as you can see, Boutique Sante support quite a number of households uh a, a year uh pathway to a better life cms clm shimel avimur it's uh basically a crown program uh where we take a woman that is we select uh, according to certain criteria that is in extreme poverty and uh we put them in that program where they are being trained they are being monitored and they are being given access to, uh, to wealth and uh, we uh, really make sure that, uh, you know, what they are getting, like, you know, well, uh, that CLM graduation that I was at, uh, that woman was saying that uh, uh, now that I have, uh, I have uh, a cow, I have uh, goats, I feel that, you know, uh, I have access to, to more wealth and that I'm more in control eh, of my uh, of my life. Uh, we make sure that, you know, if we find them eh, in a situation where they didn't have a house, they didn't have had like uh, all the basic that they will need to be in a dignified situation that when we leave them, they at least have a house and they have uh, eh, some eh, livestock to be able and also commerce to be able to 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 get a, to get by uh, a, to the final life and this is also uh, really important. There's one uh, other a tool that we are developing and our a, well, it's that's good that we are going to that holistic approach because I was just going to say that we're developing uh, that uh, program called Zone Francoise and a Zone Francoise is what it's an area where you know we have all of our program interacting together and to see exactly how is that going to help empower that community between CLM, the bank, and all the program of the foundation. All of those programs are available and that goes in exactly into what we see here, that holistic approach to see how we can lift not only individual people into the cycle of poverty, but communities and out of to that cycle. So that's uh, something that we hope is going to have a better success. Thank you so much. Uh, I hope that uh, this in, this presentation was informative. And if there's any question, I'm here to answer them. Great. Thank you so much. Um, I was just checking um, our chat. OK, I don't think we have any questions right in here. So we're going to jump to the next presentation and then we'll take questions at the end. Okay, so now I would like to introduce Irene Boyo. I'm looking for, there she is. Irene, um, I will turn the screen sharing over to you. You're welcome to click screen share or share screen and start with your presentation and fill us in on things at IRC San Diego and the Business Women in Action.
Sorry, I didn't realize that I was uh, speaking to myself. Um, <laughs> apologize there. Thank you so much, Sarah, uh, for the opportunity to speak about um, our program here at the uh, IRSC. And uh, I'll just talk a little bit about um, what we have been doing mostly this year and um, what, IRS, what IRSC star program is in Taos. So, um, IRSC star program has been around for over 10 years um, and it's been helping focuses on helping women overcome um, economic barriers. So most of our clients focus on um, refugee and immigrant clients who have come from other countries. So when the last speaker was speaking, I could hear the stories of the clients that we serve here. So I'll start with the, with the picture that you see here. We do have um, some of these women. Uh, you may have met him at um, we, one of the WE uh, events. So we have um, a creator who is from Afghanistan. She is um, here displaying some of her magnetized that she sells. And then we have Osab who is from Somali um, who started a skincare. And then here um, we do have also uh, one of our clients from um, Choice Convictions. She's also selling some cupcakes. And uh, here we have our newest cohort, um, Business Women in Action, that um, concluded last year. So I'll just talk about some of the services that we do. Um, we provide here at the IRSC and why is this very important um, to the services that we provide to women. So as I said, uh, we um, start center, we start program really focuses on providing women um, with economic mobility. So the program addresses core barriers of low to um, low income women who face different um, barriers in opening or uh, operating businesses here. Like I said, we serve um, everyone, but our target and our focus client are refugee and immigrants uh, who have been resettled here or who came here from ev anywhere um, in uh, affected countries in, um, in the world. So the services we provide, again, is just helping them to be able to navigate the, uh, the business system here in the US to be able to start the business and also successfully um, manage those businesses and be able to uh, add economic uh, impact on their um, household. And some of the activities that we provide here at the um, we uh, start program is we provide trainings. So our trainings are uh, that classroom trainings that um, we're able to provide trainings to the women to understand the, the programs that are economic programs or business council, uh, business programs that we are, that they are looking to start. Um, as the last speaker spoke about, most of these women come from countries that are still developing. And uh, as we know, women who come from countries that are still developing, they are the backbone of the economic uh, activities in those countries, even though they are informal businesses. So they uh, provide a lot of informal activities that are micro businesses. And when they get here, they still come back with, the, they come with the same spirit of uh, engaging in business. However, uh, the US system of doing business is very different from the countries where they're coming from. And that's when IRC star program comes from in to support them. So we support them to be able to um, understand the system, navigate the system, learn about um, 
best practice of uh, starting the business and making it a viable business here in the US and also being able to uh, help them manage the business that they're starting and make it more uh, mobility, it could make to their the overall goal of um, economic mobility. So how do we do that? We do that through trainings, um, workshops that are tailored towards these women. It's usually provided in their primary language um, so that they are able, we are meeting them where they are. We are also uh, do this during our 101 um, business advising. So we have business advisors who speak the languages that the women are able to speak and we are able to provide those um, services in the languages that the women are able to, um, to comprehend and understand uh, what they're working on. And then what areas do we focus on? Of course, we start with the business that we have to help them really navigate what um, licensing uh, processes are in different industries. It could be childcare, it could be food business, it could be even just starting like a growth in business. We help them uh, obtain required uh, business licenses. Um, are you able to hear me? I think you froze for just a minute there. Looks like my internet. Yes, sorry, I can see uh, my internet is, is unstable. So let me see if I can turn my camera off. Okay. Okay, let me know if um, we can hear you you well now. Okay, thank you so much. Um, yeah, so I was speaking about some of the things that we do with the women so that they are able to actually understand what process is. So we do focus on things like uh, helping them get a business license in different industries, uh, help them access uh, micro loans if they are ready to access those micro loans so that they are able to grow and expand their business. We also help them uh, to be able to market their business, like even a simple thing like um, a business card, those things go a long way. So we do provide those services to, uh, to the women. Oh my gosh. I think we might have just lost Irene. Um, so while she's coming back on, um, I had forgotten to mention it, but it's been in our um, our promotion, but I did wanna note that the IRC in San Diego is one of our longest standing grant partners. And that's something that really makes we very special and unique in the way that we do grant making, focusing on long-term impact, helping organizations become sustainable in the way that they're providing programming for the women in their regions. And so um, Banco Zay has been a partner since 2016. So um, still a longer term partner, but a little bit more recent compared to IRC. Um, so while Irene is getting back online, we did have a couple of questions come in through the chat window for um, Air Lance and your team. Um, one is a question um, from Debbie about how Boutique Sante is overcoming some of the obstacles in the current political situation. Uh, yeah. So uh, as I was saying in my presentation, one of the major issue that we have right now is uh, transportation and uh, a, having uh, a, the uh, women that are engaged into that program with us, having given them access to a, to the goods. So we have to be very creative. Um, just an example, there's no other way to explain it. Uh, you can go from Port-au-Prince to go anywhere and the North and the South or anything. So what you have to do, you have to go, you have to take a plane and go to the North or the South. 
And those plants, um, uh, they only land at a very specific uh, location. Then you still have to drive to a place where you're trying to bring uh, the materials that you are taking. And from there, depending on um, a, where you want to reach, you might consider putting all these materials on the back of a donkey and ride the rest of the road to make sure that it goes there. So that's how we've been making sure that uh, we are uh, still providing uh, our boutique Santé clients with uh, the goods that they need. The downsides of that is that uh, because the logistic is so heavy, price also have to go up. Thank you. Um, another question, um, Karen writes that she saw on your website that 40% of your clients are unable to um, read or write when they enter the program. Do you provide basic literacy in addition to the other training courses that you mentioned or um, how do you work with them? Yes, we do provide basic literacy. And um, all of these women that I've seen in that uh, CLM graduation, I will say more than half of them could not read and write. And uh, they came out of the program with knowing how to read and write. And what's very uh, important to mention is that we just don't teach them how to read and write and basic arithmetic. It's kind of all oriented to what they're going to need to help them uh, progress within uh, a, a, their life and be independent. So uh, the modules that we will be uh, discussing with them and what how they will learn how to read and write, it's, for example, a business module. Uh, so you read, you learn the, the technical stem, and uh, by doing that, you also learn how to read and write. And so that's how we do it. Uh, another thing that I have for, well, that's really another time. I was trying to see if I have a, a one of our training modules here. Because it's, uh, it's all pictures with the words so that they can see and relate to what they see. Nice. And if you have a link um, to something like that that you're able to share and send out afterwards, I can send to everybody um, who was here yes. if you didn't have that just at hand. Um, but there's one other question. And then um, I thought I saw um, Irene, I think is coming back in. So we'll just do one other question and then we'll go back to Irene. Um, asking how you're able to collect loan repayments um, from people out in the communities with all of the current obstacles. That's a very good question. <laughs> and the answer is going to be surprising. There uh they actually come to the loan officer to give back the money and uh, i remember i was talking to a the uh, a executive director of uh, a, the bank and because of all that the situation they were trying to see well we need to find a way for you to be able to get access to the services and areas where it's very difficult to uh, to, to transport and we are going to try to see if we can send uh, a credit agent to you. A, a lot of those people that had loans, you know, said, don't worry. You will not only you will get back your money, but we will tell you when we can come. Nice. Thank you. Um, okay, Irene, are you ready to jump back into your presentation? I think you're on mute. Oh, there you go. Really, really apologize. My computer did unthinkable. Um, restarted in the middle of a presentation. So apologize for that. Um, let me see if I can reshare my screen. So up. And if you're not able to share it for some reason, if you want to just talk through it, and then I can I can send it out to everybody after the call too.
Oh, there we go. Okay, again, I apologize for that uh, inconveniences. Um, so, let's see here. Yeah, so those are some of the services that we provide here at I, um, IRSC. Um, we, we start program and um, I'll talk through a few things. Um, so I was looking through the previous, this calendar year starting from uh, May. These are some of the services the women, uh, we had about five, uh, 251 uh, unique women access our services and um, they accessed over 650,000 in micro loans, stipends and grants during this uh, period of this uh, grant year. And then we also had, um, so we have different programs within the WSTAP uh, program. So we had uh, 21, client women enrolled in our business women in action training and uh, out of those 21 we had 20 successfully co complete the program and i'll say they were in the first picture the um our ukrainian clients so the, those were the first like the first time we um have started serving you our clients who are coming in from ukraine and uh, those ones are the ones who um access that program specifically and um, we have as to year to date we also have um, 183 women access our training uh, services and this includes uh, targeted cohorts that um, serve specifically child care as uh, um, other services um, that are provided to to the women to women so including child care uh, other industries of uh, need that women are interested in and then we also are uh, in total we have enrolled um 251 um in the program so this uh, number just corresponds with this one uh with the first one uh, so there is a uh, Oh, one over there that's a, a little bit of a typo and then um i also looked at the areas of counseling um what are these women coming to us uh what are they looking for so majority of them are still coming in looking for um prevention services where uh, startup services where uh by they're coming in looking to start a business or learn about how to start a business and then we also have those ones who are coming in looking for a uh, finance or um, capital envision into their business and then we have a few who are looking at managing their business and uh, then we do have trainings and um, um, other services like uh, marketing and um, technology. So those are the areas that the women come into. Um, the services that uh, IRSC we starts uh, program has uh, provides to our clients. Um, and then here, I just kind of wanted to look at, I um, kind of pulled this data from, uh, goodness, what's happening here? Let's see if I'm having data. Be sure. Irene, I think we're losing your audio. Okay, so I'm going to join all. Okay, try now. Okay, can you all hear me? Yes. There is an echo there. How about now? I think we can hear you now. 
Okay. So I'm going to join using my phone. It looks like my uh, computer internet is really not good. Um, let me go back here. So I was looking at the services that we uh, provide the capital funding that the women's uh, accessed. As you can see, we have some state and local funding that came in through the women access and this came through um, Dream Grant. So this was provided to the women who actually participated in the training programs. They were able to complete the cohort. And then after they completed the cohort, they were eligible to apply for $5,000 uh, to help them start their business. So for this one, we see that um, uh, women are accessed over 300,000 into this uh in this program so other program that you see follows there is other grants this um actually in terms it can be in terms of like uh stipends and stipends i'll say like they will come in to access things like uh, resilience boot camp and then we'll give them a computer and a microsoft office and that will um, count as that um, access to capital through those type-in programs. And then we do also have a micro loans that is also through the IRC Center for Economic uh, Opportunities. Then this program um, provides services into, uh, provides women with a loan program. So they are able to uh, apply and get uh, a loan for up to 50,000. And this is how um, that's the type of funding that's here. And then the other ones uh, can be like uh, in other institutions if women up, um, get service uh, my loans from other services or so they get uh, their own um, investment like um, owner's investment in a program and they report to us that this is what we have been doing. We are able to uh, also record that. And then there's those ones uh, who come in and do a line of credit. So that's also um, other service uh, access to capital that the women are able to uh, receive. And then here um, we just, going through our reporting and I just wanted to pull out this one. These are some of the areas that we measure the women, how they're doing. Um, with this, we see that uh, we measured, we asked about, I believe 118 clients, these questions, if they are able to open uh, a, save, a checking or saving account on their own. And you can see some of the results here. We, we found that um, about over uh, 90 of those women said, yes, they are able to, like 66 say strongly agree. And then we had three, 33 who said um, they uh, agree. So, and then you see those two who are still like need help. And then we have four and the rest that are also still say they did, don't disagree or neither. So we also looked at like applying for credit card. Uh, if they're able to apply or view the credit card on, on their own. And then we see almost similar responses from um, uh, women across those two areas. Um, we also had um, another question that asked if they're able to manage their own um, money on the, I make financial decisions on their own. And then we see almost similar responses, if not like maybe more by one or two um, women who are uh, added on this one. And then uh, managing their money, we see also similar responses out uh, there. These are just the data that we asked the women and they were able to uh, just respond to us. Um, what they feel the program has done to them. So with this, and with my internet has been really like um, body, I'm going to kind of uh, read a story for um, one of our clients who have participated in multiple um, WISTA programs across the um, 
the spectrum of the programs that we provide, and this is one of the success stories. So I say Masoma Herod, an African immigrant living in San Diego, has shared her story inspiring the journey of pursuing her goal to start a family child uh, daycare business in San Diego with the help of IRSC and IRSC's ongoing through steps program. Uh, provides tools, <laughs> tools and resources to maintain and run a small successful daycare business. After fleeing Afghanistan with her family and facing numerous challenges, including language barriers, caring for her autistic son, Mosoma was determined to have her own business while, while also providing care for her son and having the flexibility to take him to his appointment. Mosoma received a variable resource resources, inform, information, and technical assistance through the STEP program to navigate running her business. The program also provided her with a stipend to purchase extra equipment and a laptop to help digitalize her business. She stated, when I moved to the when I moved to the US in the beginning, it was very challenging to navigate the process of opening and running a small daycare business. But the help of IRSC and tools that they provided through program like STEPS made it so much easier to navigate and feel confident to go through the process since joining the STEPS program. She has enrolled through three more children in her daycare and is actively working on expanding her business. Her business now has Google My Business account and she will be working with IRC Council to develop her social media account and make marketing skills to promote her business. Marzia Rahim, uh, Rahimi also helped her develop business plan and provide other financial tools to track her budget and expenses. She also opened a business bank account. The stipend through the program also helps to, uh, to buy, helped her to buy extra equipment for the new enrolled children and laptop to help her digitalize her business. She's confident that she will achieve her goal of opening more a uh, significant childcare center and hiring employee to help help. Thanks to the support from IRSC, Masoma is genuinely grateful for the assistance and support from the IRSC and highly recommend their program to anyone looking to start or grow their business. Her story is a testament to impact of the STEPS program in empowering women-owned businesses to achieve their entrepreneurial dreams her determination and hard work combined with the support from the program have enabled her to overcome obstacles and build a thriving business. Masama's journey serves as a reminder of resilience potential within immigrant communities. It's, it highlights the importance of providing resources and support to help them succeed in their new home. She expresses her gratitude to IRC for helping her achieve her dream and is thankful for the opportunity to pursue her passion for running a successful business. And I think that ends my presentation. Thank you so much, Irene. Um, it kind of leads to a question that came into our chat that I just want to read really quickly. And then um, I know some folks are having to drop off and go, but this recording will be shared afterward. Um, the question reads, what um, is the success rate of new businesses and how do you help women evaluate the viability of their proposed business to determine should they go forward with it? Um, and then kind of where to go from there. Thank you so much. That's a very good question. So we do actually have a very a high viability of the business, especially like the childcare businesses. Um, most of our women, it takes a long, some time to take off 
but once it go it takes off you um you can see in the numbers that we um actually didn't include one matrix but we um have at least as uh, 60% of the women who start the business uh, still stay in a business. I will pull out the data um, and include in this um, sent over because right now I don't want to just speak over uh, on top of my mind, but we do have a high rate. Um, again, one thing I wanted to mention with this, it's only one year, but looking backward uh, a few years, we see that there is a high interest, um, a high uh, viability of the business. And then for the piece of helping them um, maintain their business, we do have evolving program. Like this story I read came from um, STEPS program, which is a spin-off from a startup childcare program. And then um, we, once they finish one year, we have like a STEPS program where they now move on building those technical um, through skills to be able to maintain their business. Thank you, Irene. Thank you for that. And Judith reminds us that the WISE evaluation activity tracks the sustainability of various, various <laughs> businesses as well. Yes. Thank you. Well, I know that we are just about out of time, so I want to make a couple announcements. And then if anybody has a little bit more time um, in your afternoon and you want to hang out and talk a bit more, ask more questions, um, we're definitely free to do that. Um, uh, thank you so much to our presenters, especially for being here, for sharing their time. We see lots of rounds of applause. And yes, absolutely. Those were fantastic presentations. And I really appreciate you taking the time to put that together and share with us. Um, thank you to everybody who took time out of your day to attend. Um, thank you for being a part of we and our community. Our recent newsletter, our um, e-blast that went out yesterday, um, I think yesterday I put a link in the chat window, highlighted a lot of our upcoming events. We have a lot going on this year. Uh, it's our 20th anniversary of grant making, which we are really excited about. So we are sharing a lot more events this year, um, fundraising events and also educational events, ways to connect in person and really engage and be a part of our mission. So um, more to come on all of those. Um, please keep track of us and connect with us. And we hope to see you again soon. Um, along with that, I'm going to put one more um, link in the chat window, um, which is a link to our 2420 campaign celebrating our 20th anniversary. Um, if you appreciate being a part of our grant making, I encourage you to continue being a part of that. Um, share this campaign with your friends and family um, and encourage them to be a part of that as you can see the impact that this makes here in San Diego and around the world for women and their families who are experiencing poverty. Um, and this helps us to continue what we're doing and expand what we're doing and serve more women and families. So thank you all for being a part of this today. Thank you for being here. Um, I am going to go ahead. Oh, Debbie, are you waving goodbye or are you, do you have a question? Oh, you just say goodbye. Okay, so I am gonna go ahead and pause the uh, recording now. Um, and then if you'd like to stick around um, and chat or ask questions, you're welcome to do that. Thank you so much.